Um, you are welcome to another video tutorial session on finite element procedure for solving structural engineering problem. Today we are going to solve another source um, system problem. Um, this um, problem is a bit different from the um, example problem we solved in, in my previous tutorial. In this um, particular problem, there is actually a level of difficulty which I want to illustrate how um it is solved I'm coming if you should look at um this source problem at um node three we have an inclined roller support so how do we deal with um issues with inclined roller support when we are solving a um, source problem in this video i'm going to explain how we analyze source system with inclined roller supports um, the, the structural system, system you see on the screen is made up of three elements, three truss elements, and there is a point load at no two horizontal uh, point load of 1,000 kN. So we are using um, the matrix, we are using the finite, uh, analysis, fin finite element procedure to solve this problem. We were told just under the this image, you will see that we're told that the cross-sectional area of the three elements are all um, 6 times 10 raised minus 4 meters square, while the E, the young modulus, is 210 times 10 raised minus 6 kilonewton per meter square, or um, 210 uh, gigapascal. So we're going to use, um, as I've said, the finite element procedure to solve this problem. Um, to solve this problem, uh, our, the first thing we need to do is to define our finite element model, and I did this. I'm coming. I did this. This is lost. The finite element model for this problem is illustrated in this image, and you will see that I lab the finite element as um, three members, which I labeled uh, element one, element two, and element three with its green triangles, with the green triangle uh, number. You also need to number the nodes. So I number uh, the node here, node one, the red circle, node one, node two, node three. After you have numbered the node, you need to number the degree of freedom at each node. Node, and for its source structure system, we have two degree of freedom at each node, um, an horizontal degree of freedom and a vertical degree of freedom. So at node one, we have um, you can see the two degree of freedom at node 1, um, degree of freedom 1, and degree of freedom 2, denoted by the um, arrow head, the arrow head, degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom 2. The same thing at node 2, we have a uh, 2 degree of freedom, which are labeled um, degree of freedom 3 and 4. At node 3, we have also 2 degree of freedom, which are labeled um, the 5 and 6. So this structural system has 6 degree of freedom. So you should note this. So this is how we define the finite element model. So after you have done this, um, the next thing you need, we need to do is compute the local stiffness matrix. Uh, when you compute the local stiffness uh, met matrix, you assemble it together to form your global stiffness met matrix. If there is need for any modification for the global stiffness matrix, you modify the global stiffness matrix. We also, we also compute um, the um, and the first vector is a, is a column vector. And once we have, once we have our um, global stiffness matrix and our first vector, we can multiply the inverse of the global stiffness matrix and the first vector to give us our displacement quantity. Uh, but because we have a roller support here, we need to, when, when we are uh, determining our global stiffness matrix, we need to modify the global stiffness matrix and, uh, and because of this, uh, due to this um, inclined roller support. And in my previous uh, video, in one dimensional problem, I introduced a concept called the multi-point constraint uh, model. And this multi-point constraint model, it applies, that's what we're going to use to actually, um, to actually define this inclined roller support for our global stiffness matrix. So um, this uh, multi-point constraint model, uh, we're at, 
uh, if you should read the text here, I say in problem, the, um, this problem, um, the, the model is applied to inclined ruler or rigid connection. So these are the problems that um, we can apply the uh, multipoint constraint model to. So this, the multipoint constraint model is ideally suited to solve um, this type of problem. And the multipoint uh, constraint equation is defined by this equation. Beta 1, QP1 plus beta 2, QP2 equals to uh, beta 1. So we have to write an equation at node 3 in this format. B1, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 0 are coefficients. Why this, the, the QP1 is, is the, for, for source system, let's define the QP1 as the horizontal degree of freedom at the node we are considering. And the QP2 is the vertical um, degree of freedom, the, the, the vertical displacement at um, the node we are considering. So at node 3, our QP1 will be Q, Q5. Why our QP2 will be Q6. So um, we need to write an equation at node 3 in this form. And at node 3, we see this magenta line. At this magenta line, there is actually no movement at that point because that is the um, point of reaction. So we can resolve our degree of freedom, our displacement quantity at um, at degree of freedom 5 and 6 along this line. So if we resolve the, quantity, uh, the, the Q5 and Q6 along this line, we can, uh, we can, have, um, we can write um, um, this, this equation here. Resolving, say we have a Q5 here, and we have Q6 here. So we are going to resolve Q5 and Q6 along this magenta line, this magenta line. So to do this, if you look at our source problem, because um, the like this is one meter, the, the distance between node one and node two is uh, 1,000 mm, one meter, and the distance between node two and node three is also one meter. You see it's a uh, one meter. So because this is, because they are both one meter, this angle is actually 45. This is a 45 degree angle, and if I should extend this line outward, this is also 45 degree. This is 45 degree. And also this is 45 degree. So resolving Q5 and Q6 along the magenta line, um, Q5 component, because its, it's component is pointing downward, one, one, once it's resolved along the magenta line, it will point downward. So we have minus Q5, minus Q5, uh, it should be, sorry, I made a mistake with the angle, it's actually 45, this, they are both 45 actually, but this, this is 45 here, this is 45, and this is 45. I want to write it like this. Actually, the same, but let's use this through 45. So, resolving um, Q5 and Q6. Um, so, Q5, um, because resolving Q5 along the magenta line, we have uh, minus Q5 cos 45, and Q6 will be, um, if we resolve Q6 along the magenta line, it will be pointing upward, opposite to the Q5 component. So it'll be plus Q6 sine 45 equals to zero because there is no any movement along that point of reaction. So this equation here can be simplified to this because cos 45 also equals to sine, also equals to sine 45. But this equation can be sim simplified to this. So this um this equation is actually very similar to this. So if you compare um, these two equations, equation one and these two equations, you can see our Q5, the equation of Q5, which is beta one, is equals to minus one. The coefficient of um, Q6, which is one, is equals to beta two. Beta two equals to one, because 
Um, the coefficient of QC is one, beta two. And B naught, that is the, the value at the right hand side of the equation is B naught. The, the value on, on the right hand side of our equation is zero. So B naught equals to zero. So this is the so this is our this is actually what we are, we are looking for this beta coefficient. So once we have this coefficient, we need to actually uh, write this matrix. I've introduced this matrix in my one-dimensional problem. This is the matrix we use to modify our um, our global stiffness matrix. So we see beta one square. Uh, beta one square is actually minus one square, which is one. Beta one multiplied by beta 2 is, also, is uh, minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1. Here's also minus 1. Here's also 1. So because um, the equation, the this equation here is uh, 5, 6, q5 plus minus q5 plus q6, so the numbering will be 5 and 6. 5, 6 along the rule, 5, 6 along the column. So we need to add this um, component, c multiplied by this matrix, in the position 5, 6, of the global stiffness matrix. Um, the, we also need to modify the first vector um, by this um, by this equation. But because B naught is equal to zero, the vector is a zero vector, so we actually don't need to modify it because we are getting zero and zero there. So it does not affect the first vector. But if there was a value there, we will add this vector, this first vector, at position five and six of the first vector matrix. So we 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 use um, this is how we modify the um, the global stiffness matrix. We mod we need to modify the global stiffness matrix uh, by this e by this um, equation by this matrix equation here. Yeah. So um, I'm going to illustrate um, this process on the MATLAB working environment. Um, after we have say we've computed the um, displacement vector and our Easier force in the member. We can also compute the reaction components at each at the support using this equation. R equals to KQ minus F. Where this R is our where this K is our um, is our global is our global stiffness matrix unmodified. Our the global stiffness matrix for this question the global stiffness matrix is a six by six matrix because it that six degree of freedom. So the K is our unmodified global stiffness matrix. The Q is our displacement quantity we that, that was calculated. By the F is our um, force vector. So if you should calculate this, you compute your reaction at you compute the reaction force at each node. So this reaction uh, for this question, this reaction vector will be a six by one vector. The reaction force will be a six by one vector. Six six by one column. Um, so now I'll move to the MATLAB working environment to illustrate uh, what I just explained. Um, so now we're in on the MATLAB working environment. So we're using the multipoint constraint um, to modify our to modify uh, the degree of freedom at um, the ruler support um, node. So this is the question. This is the question. This is our finite element model defined. So we see these are the elements. We see our, it has three elements, element one, two, three, six degree of freedom. And you should also note the um, arrow direction uh, for each element. The arrow direction on each element denotes the start and the end node. Where the arrow is pointing from denotes the start node for that element. Where the arrow is pointing to denotes the end node. For element one, the start node is one. And the end node is uh, two because the arrow edge is pointing in the direction as uh, uh, shown. For element three, the start node is one, and the end node is three because of the direction of the of the arrow. So the first thing we need to do, we need to compute the local stiffness matrix of um, each element. Element one, two, three. This is local stiffness matrix. Um, so to do that, as I it's similar to what I did in my previous video, so I'm not going to waste time in this explanation. You, uh, we need to define our young modulus. My e, the e variable here is noting my young modulus. 
Uh, the young modulus, the unit is in newton per millimeter square. So that is why this is 210 times 10 for 3 newton per millimeter square. The area, the unit is in millimeter square. So initially the unit was in meter square. That is 10 power minus 6. I multiply by 10 power 6 um, to convert it to millimeter square. So A here is denoting my cross sectional area for all the elements. Um, the, theta, the theta 1 is denoting my angle for element 1. And in the question, you will see that the angle for element 1 is 90 degrees. The angle is measured uh, from the horizontal. I explained this in my previous video, so I advise you actually go to my previous video to see how, to understand how the angle measurement is defined. For element 1, the angle is 90 degrees. The angle is measured from the positive horizontal axis to where the element is. This is the positive horizontal axis here. The pity that I cannot sketch on in this work environment. Uh, the positive of element one is, is shown here. And the positive horizontal, the positive horizontal axis, the angle from the positive horizontal axis to the element is 90 degree. So that's why theta one is 90 degree. L1 is a one, is a one meter. But well, because I'm using a unit of millimeter, so that's why this is a 1,000 mm. So um, I, this is a function that defines my global stiffness matrix. The function actually returns um, three, power, three outputs. K1 denotes my uh, local stiffness matrix for element one. L1 denotes my cosine angle, cos theta one for element one. M1 here denotes uh, my sine angle, sine theta one for element one. So I just need to enter these four parameters here, and this function uh, calculates my um, local stiffness matrix for element one. Actually, this function, GSME, uh, is actually the definition here. So you should look at it, and you can note it down. So this is the definition. Um, so I use this function to um, create my local stiffness matrix. I just need to enter theta one. I've already defined theta one as um, 90 degree. L1 is... Um, 1000 mm, E is already defined as this value here. A is the cross sectional area, which I defined there. So this is, um, so once, the, once um, this code is run, is, uh, is run um, our local stiffness matrix, which is defined for element one, which is defined as K1, is calculated, and also L1 and M1. You do the same thing for element two. For element two, the angle is um, zero degree. The angle theta two is zero degree. This is element two here. Element two is the element between no two and no three. You can see the, because the element is exactly along the horizontal positive axis, the theta angle is zero degree. So defining theta two as zero degree, L2 is also uh, one meter, 1,000 mm. You see that in the question, the, this, the distance between no two and no three, for element two is a um, one meter. We see that here, one meter. So, so once you impute um, the theta two, L two, E, and A in this function, in this uh, um, function method, the local student matrix for element two is also computed, defined as K two. L two and M two is the cosine angle and sine angle for element two. The same thing is also done for element three. E is defined, A is defined. Um, theta three here is defined as a 45 degree. So the angle between element three and um, the horizontal and the positive horizontal axis is 45 degree. And we're taking measurement from node one because node one is our start node. We always take measurement from the start node. So based on our arrow definition, our start node is one. So that's why we're taking me measurement from node one and the angle from between the horizontal axis and the element is 45 degree. So you enter the parameter theta three, L three, E, A in the function. The function computes the local student matrix for, for us, um, the cosine and the sine angle for element three, noted as uh, L3 and uh, M3. 
So after we have computed, this is the um, local student matrix for elementary. So after we have computed this um, local student matrices, next thing is to compute um, the global student matrix. And how I usually do, do this, I start with a base matrix, a zero, a, a zero base matrix. Um, I start with a zero base matrix. And for this, our problem, because we have six degree of freedom, um, degree of freedom, our question has um, six degree of freedom, three nodes, that is um, six degree of freedom. Um, so our we need to create a, a, square, a zero square matrix of size six by six. So this MATLAB line of code create a six by six zero matrix, which is defined as this. So this is our six by six zero matrix. I'm denoting the matrix K. Actually, this this K is denoting our global stiffness matrix. So I'm going to add our local stiffness matrix for for each element to this zero matrix. And you do this using this um, line of code. Uh, let me move this semicolon so that we'll see the addition. So um, our zero met our six by six zero matrix is created with this line of code. This code adds K1 matrix to zero matrix. Element one is located between um, is located between um, the group of freedom one and four. Element one is located between node one and two, and node one and two has four degree of freedom. That is one, two, three, four. So that's why in this line of code we have one column four here. This one column four actually means one to four comma one column four. Um, so what we write here, we also write on the right hand side plus K1. So this is how you add K1 to the global system matrix. You also do the same thing for K2. K2 is located between the degree of freedom three to six. That is three, four, five, six. So that is the degree of freedom attached to element two. So that's why this is three column six. To show you on the, in the finite element model, this is our element two here. As you can see element two is located between node two and node three. And the degree of freedom are, for elements at node two and three are three, four, five, six. And I'm, I'm, I'm numbering it three, four, five, six because you number from your start node. If this arrow head was pointing from node three, my number will be five, six, three, four. So that's just the logic. But because the arrow head is pointing from node two, so the number will be three, four, five, six. So that's why um, in this MATLAB line of code here, this MATLAB line of code, we have um, three column six. That is, this column, three column six means um, three, four, five, six. This three, four, five, six along the row, the other three, four, five, six is also along the column. So you write this code, you repeat it on the left hand side, on the right hand side, you add K2 to it. Do the same thing for K3. Uh, K3, the degree of freedom number are this, one, two, and five, and six. Uh, one, two, five, and six. So this, so you write um, this code here. You write it. On, you also repeat the same thing on the right hand side. You add K3 to it. So this K3 is actually our last local square matrix. So once this code is run, uh, this um, this is our our final global stiffness matrix. But we need to modify this global stiffness matrix by using the penalty method. So we need to um, find out the largest. Um, or the, the largest value in this group of system matrix, and we multiply by 10,000, and we do not have value by C. So this, uh, this model line of code actually does that for us. I wrote C, C is the, is the last stiffness which we want to use to modify our global system matrix. And the, um, the mass function actually um, gets the value, the greatest uh, value in the, look, in the global system matrix, which is this matrix. And it, and then we multiply the value by one thousand. So this mass function, what we just need to do is to impute the k global Stephen matrix. We write it in this format: k uh, open bracket uh, dot uh, dot dot multiplied by one thousand. So you run this code. Our c is defined as a one point eight nine zero zero times ten power nine. So this is the stiffness we use to multiply our global stiffness matrix. So this stiffness we need. 
to add it at our support degree of freedom. I mean, in this question, our support degree of freedom are actually all the nodes. But you see, we'll only be added at node 1 and node 2 because there are normal support. At node 3, the mod we'll use another form of modification, which is the multipoint constraint model. So at, node, at degree of freedom 1, 2, 3, 4, at degree of freedom 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that is the normal support, we will add um, C to the group of student metrics. So that's why, um, so actually um, the, the name um, my group of system metrics with mod k. I say mod k equals to k. Okay, but I didn't use it. Okay. Oh. Uh, I did this actually. I stored my unmodified um, global stiffness metrics. This is actually, let's name this unmodified. I stored it in this variable, unmodified global stiffness metrics. Let me run this code again. Uh, let me remove from um, this semicolon. Um, now I'll click run. So I'm now adding um, the C to the position 1,1 1, 1 of the global system metrics. So this code does that. I'm modifying the global system metrics now. I do that for position 1,1 1, 1, because we have a support degree of freedom at position 1. At degree of freedom 1, I do that for at for I add C to um, position 2,2 2 of the global system metrics. So this code does that. You can see the value here. This value of C, which has been added to this position. And the same thing is done for, uh, for 4. We also add C to position, um, to degree of freedom, to position 4,4 4 of the global system metrics, because we have a degree of freedom at um, that point. At position 3,3, at position there's no support degree of freedom at that point. So that's why um, C was not added uh, at uh, this point. Um, the support degree of freedom at at three at, at um, the, the third um, support, um, degree of freedom is free. So the that degree of freedom is unmodified. So we are only modifying um, one, two, and four. So that's what that's what I did here. One, this is for one, this is for two, and this is for four. So for the roller support, this is the code we are using to, um, this is the metrics we, want, we use to modify the um, global, stem, the global st stiffness metrics for the roller support. I define it as this. Let me remove this and um, see from, um, from the matrix side to be easier, I write it outside. That can be easier, easily um, understood. Uh, so C, I'm writing C outside. So you can see this is the matrix. The minus one is our beta one. Um, this is our beta one multiplied by beta two. This is our beta one multiplied by beta 2, and this is our beta 2 square. So this matrix is multiplied by C. And it's 1. And this matrix is the matrix we want to use to modify our global student matrix. But we are going to add this matrix at, at position 5 and 6 of the global student matrix. Why is that? Because that is where we have our ruler support. We have our ruler support at node 3, and the degree of freedom defined there is um, 5 and 6, as shown in the finite element uh, model. So <clears throat> I'm going to add mod C, C mod, that's, our, that's the um, modification for the um, ruler support. Uh, I'll add it to the global system matrix at position 5 and 6. So that's why we have 5 column 6 here. 5 column 6. What is on the right hand side? 
I write it on the what's on the left hand side is also written on the right hand side plus um, the modified matrix. So this this is written and one, and we get um, this matrix. So this is our final um this is our final modified global stiffness matrix. This is our final modified global stiffness matrix. Um, after we have done this, we need to define our force vector, and I'm defining my force vector here as F. So in this question, we only have one load on the thrust system. That is at degree of freedom three. So that's why this one thousand is in the third position. The force vector is actually a six by one vector. I mean, because it has the the thrust model has a um, six degree of freedom. That's why it's a six by one vector, and the load is defined at position three, and it is positive because at a degree of freedom three, the load is pointing to the right, one thousand kilonewton. So, but what the unit I'm using is in newton. So that's why it is one. It is a one million. That's why I have one million here defined. This is one million newton. So this this I this is the code that um, de, that um, defines my force vector, the, column, the force column vector. So this is the force. Um, so once this is defined, we can calculate our displacement quantity just by um, inverting our our modified matrix and multiplying by F. Inverting our modified matrix and multiplying by k is our modified matrix, which we, which is this matrix here. This matrix here. So um, this inverse function here inverts k and multiply by f. This, so this is displacement quantity. So this is displacement quantity, and we should and the unit of the displacement quantity is in millimeter square. So this here is um, 0 0.0003 millimeter. Actually, the displacement quantity at one and three is supposed to be zero, but it's giving a very, very small value. Uh, but that's how finite element uh, procedure works. Don't let's get the um, an accurate um, value. Um, at node three, we have um, at um, at degree of freedom three, we have this um, displacement. We have um, this displacement value 11.9052. Uh, millimeter. At degree of freedom four, we have like zero. There is a support degree of freedom here, yeah? so that's why this is a very, very small value too, zero point zero 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 something. Um, at five and six, five and six, the degree of freedom is defined um, by this quantity. At five, the degree of freedom is defined as um, three point nine six eight seven mm. The, degree of, the displacement is defined as um, three point nine six eight seven mm. Why the displacement at at the graph of six is defined as um, 3.9684 mm. So this is how the displacement quantity for the system is computed. We are going to compare this result uh, with our ANSYS um, result in my next video. I'm going to solve this problem on the ANSYS software. So I'm going to show you how we model inclined support on the ANSYS program. So after we have done this, we also need to if, say we want to compute our reaction component at the node. We can use um, um, this formula I showed you. We can use this formula. Let me erase it. We can use this R formula here. Yeah? R equals to this formula here. Yeah? Can use this formula. R equals to KQ minus F. K is our unmodified um, K is our unmodified um, global system matrix. K is our different quantity that, that was calculated. F is the displacement vector. So that's what I'm doing here uh, with this code. Mod K is actually I've actually changed it. It's no more mod K. It is U. Right? Yes. UN mod K because I actually changed the definition when I was explaining the code. 
this is UN mod K, the unmodified um, global stiffness matrix multiplied by Q minus F. Multipli multiplied by Q minus F. So if you should run this code, uh, you get this quantity here. You get this quantity here. You get um, for the um, so these are the reaction components. One and two is the reaction component at node, node one. Three and four is the reaction component at uh, node two. Five, five and six is is the, are the reaction component at node three. So the reaction component at um, node one is actually um, like node at node one is minus five hundred um, kilonewton or minus five or um, say or minus five hundred um, thousand newton. The reaction component at node two is also like it's something very the value very close to uh, minus five hundred newton or five or minus five hundred kilonewton. The reaction component at node three is actually zero because there is any reaction support at that point. At four is a very small value, so which like I think thirty. This value multiplied by ten is power five. I think maybe 30 uh, newton or 300 newton, very small value. Maybe it's supposed to give zero, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to check the reaction component at this at this um, support reaction on the ANSYS uh, program in my next video. Um, the reaction component at 5 and 6, this reaction component in the x direction, minus 500 newton. Reaction component in the y direction, 6 also 500 kilonewton. So this is how the reaction component, all the reaction component at the nodes can be calculated at once. Say you don't want to use this formula, we can also use um, this um, um, this formula. Q, uh, this um, formula, I've, I've explained this formula in my previous, um, my previous video. For you to get the reaction, you multiply as minus C by the displacement quantity. Let's define R1 as the reaction component at node 1. So if this is reaction component at node 1, component at node 1, node 1 has two um, reactions. So we need to multiply C by two displacement quantity. So this is actually supposed to be Q2. I'm coming. Q2. Minus C. Uh, multiply by... Uh, by this displacement quantity. Displacement quantity at, at position one and two of the calculated and uh, displacement matrix. Keys are the calculated displacement matrix. So if I should run this code, you see I'll get two reaction components. I'll get minus five and minus 4.997, which is actually what we got. Um, it's actually the same thing we got here. So we, we, you can decide to use this equation if you want. So how to define it as a reaction component at um, at node two, and at node two we have um, just one support reaction, and that support reaction is at position four. So this will actually supposed to be minus c multiplied by the similar quantity at position four. So I run this. Uh, see, I get a very small value, minus 33.32 uh, newton. So this is the value of the reaction component at um, node at node two, a degree of down four, which is what we actually have here in um, four decimal place, minus 0 0.003 times 10 to the power five. So, uh, at position four. Let's call this R3, not 4. R3, the reaction component at node 3. So you multiply this met the C component. That, that is our last stiffness. Multiply by 5, the displacement quantity at 5 and 6. 5 and 6 are the displacement quantity at position at um, node 3. So I, multiply, I run it. Whoa. It does not give similar results with with um, this position, and so this formula actually 
does not it seems this formula does not apply to uh, node 3 i'm thinking because of the inclined ruler support but let me see it, assuming i multiply this value by cos 45 let me see if we'll get the answer cos d 45 let's see if we'll get the answer yeah we didn't still actually get the answer. Maybe it's not, maybe we are supposed to divide. So this formula does not work at the regular support. So we don't use this formula at the regular support. The value is actually supposed to be minus five and five. So the formula does not work at the regular, regular support. So but you can use this formula for the normal support. The support at right angle to the node. So. Why is it like this? So where are we? So so we are done with um, calculation on reaction support. So now we can use our our um, our stress. Our uh, we can calculate the area force in each member. That is F one, F two, F three using our stress equation. Uh, it's not written. Let me show you the image. I explained this in my previous video. The image is not here. The image is not there. Give me a minute. Um, show this to our system. Okay. I want to copy an image from this live script. That's why I open this. Uh, image is not also here. Uh. So this is the image I was referring to. So this is stress equation for source elements. So if I should paste um, this image here, um, text. So if I paste this image here, so this is the image for stress, um, the stress components for the equation for this for for stress for for this normal stress. For, for for a trust element, uh, if we should multiply the stress this stress stress equation by the cross sectional area, we get the area force. So my F one F two F three is de defining my area force in the member. So uh, using this equation, if I multiply by A, that's the cross sectional area, I get um, the area force in the member. E is the Young modulus. I'm using this equation for my area force now. E is the Young modulus. L1 is the length of element 1. It's already defined. I defined this initially. L1, this small L1 and M1 is my cosine and the sine angle, respectively, which was co computed earlier on when I was computing the local stiffness matrix. So you, you this matrix here multiplied by this um, displacement quantity. This Q here is the displacement quantity for the source element, and each source element has four displacement quantity. Element one is as um, for displacement as for um, degree of freedom, um, degree of freedom one, two, three, four. So that's why this is one column four. So this is stress stress equation, and I'm also multiplying by the area, which is already defined, six hundred. Multiply by the area, so I'll get F one. So as you run this code, I get my um, I get the area force. I get the um, area force in the in element one. I think this element is actually supposed to be zero, but we're getting minus 33.32 uh, Newton. For element two, we do the same thing. E divided by L2 multiplied multiply by this matrix. But this L2 and M2 is the cosine and the sine angle 
for element two. I will multiply by the displacement vector for that element for the for element two. And the displacement vector for element two is is displacement is the is the degree of freedom three four five six. So that's why this is three column six. So you multiply this by the area. So once you run this code, you get um one thousand kilonewton or one million newton. So F three is one one million newton. F three you do the same thing using the same formula, and we we got um seven hundred seven point one one um uh, kilonewton or seven hundred seven thousand one hundred ten and uh, Newton, and now you want to define it. So see that we use this formula, this stress equation, to determine our area force of, of our finite element, or we actually use um, this equation, the local stiffness matrix for each element, multiplied by the local, local displacement vector for each element. And each element, as I said, has um, four because each element has four degree of freedom, they have four um, displacement quantity. So K1 here is noting our local stiffness element for element one. We already computed already. So I just calling it here. Multiply by this value. Multiply by this displacement quantity here. I'm extracting um, the displacement value at position one, two, three, four of uh, Q. Because that because element one is located between um, um between node one and, and two, and these are the different quantity at 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 at, um, at this node. So if you should multiply. If you should run this, you get the first component. You get um, this um, first um, first vector. The, the the first two words first vector is the first component in the x and y direction at node one. Why the second? The third and fourth is the first component at um, at node two in the x and y direction respectively. The same thing for element two. You do the same thing. K two local system matrix multiplied by Q um, three column six. Three column six are the determinant vector related to the to the to that element. So if you run this, you get um, this value. So one thousand zero. This is displacement vector at node two. Why this is displacement vector at um, vectors? This is displacement quantity at uh, node three. Displacement quantity at node two in the x and y direction respectively. Displacement quantity at node three in the x and y direction respectively too. Same thing for element three. You run the code, call in local stiffness matrix, multiply by the displacement quantity matrix. If you, should run, if you should calculate, once it's calculated, you get this matrix. So this is the displacement quantity at node one, because node one is the start node for element three. Why right? this is the displacement quantity at node three for element three? So minus five and five. The resultant of minus five and five, we see the resultant is um seven point something, seven point zero seven, which is what we actually have here. So I see I showed two methods for actually computing reaction components and also the area force comp um area force component and then source in uh, for source um problem using the finite element procedure. So this is how um this is done this is how source uh, problem are solved using the finite element procedure. Um, by applying the MATLAB tool. Um, in my next, so I've, I've come to the end of um, this video. In my next uh, video tutorial, I'm going to analyze, uh, I'm going to show you how, you, how we can um, model this problem on the ANSYS program. We're going to compare our results with the ANSYS results. Uh, thank you so much for watching my